Hey YouTube. We know there's a lot of research out there that shows that time in the market beats time in the market. But nonetheless, there are many reasons that a stock market crash could happen. I want to focus though on why I think that the market is not overvalued and I'm going to show you a chart which I think shows that as well. Recently, Adam Koo, who is quite a popular professional investor and trader in Singapore, gave 5 reasons why the stock market could go much higher. I found it an interesting watch and I suggest you check it out too. One of the reasons he spoke about was a comparison of the S&P 500 dividend yield against the bond yield. And that's what I want to focus on in this video. Just over a year ago, Warren Buffett said stocks are ridiculously cheap if interest rates stay at current levels. Well, guess what? Interest rates have fallen even more. Part of this is due to the action the Fed has taken to increase liquidity and support for the financial system. Let's listen in to what Buffett said about a year ago. I mean, it surprised me when you said you didn't think the market was overvalued relative to historical ratios, right? Well, it, you've, got to, you've got to crank in interest rates because everything in valuation gets back to interest rates. And if you take the U.S. Treasury bill now, which is, uh, we'll call it 80 basis points, means what, maturity, that means the U.S. Treasury bill is selling at 125 times earnings. Now, if, if, that, if your alternative is to buy something at 125 times earnings or a good business whose earnings will probably increase at, 15 or 18 times earnings. You've got to measure it against the the uh, uh, the risk. It isn't really a risk-free instrument, but the, the the standard rate. And you know, in 1982, you know, the the rates got up 15 percent or thereabouts, and that makes a lot of difference. I mean, you've got a choice with money. What do you do with it? In Europe, if you put it in the bank, you know, you you will be charged for having it there. I mean, it's better to keep it under your mattress. So. Uh, it's, you've got a choice every day of what you do, and I, I think equities are, are, ch are cheaper than, than, than fixed dollar investments. So, stock valuations need to be viewed in comparison to other asset classes, and especially the risk-free asset class of treasuries. And when we want to compare against the U.S. Treasury yield, we look at the S&P 500 dividend yield. The takeaway is that if you get an annual yield from a company that's going to pay you more than the 30-year treasury and the company has a history of raising its dividend for long term, it's a better alternative than the treasury. Generally, the bond yield should be higher than the dividend yield. As you can see here, it is always usually higher. This is because for the S&P 500, you are accepting much more volatility and so you expect a lower dividend yield in return for the possibility of higher returns. You can see here during that period in 2008 when there was a big crash, there was something called a stock bond inversion which is a bullish sign for equities because it means the equity prices have dropped and this pushes up the dividend yield of the S&P 500. And so when the S&P 500 dividend yield is higher than the treasury yield, this is a sign that equities are decently valued or even cheap. In fact, we have a similar situation right now. Let's look at the present chart. So currently, this is how things stand. I've included the S&P 500 dividend yield as the blue line, the 7 to 10 year treasury bond ETF as the green line, and also just for good measure, I've added in the Vanguard total bond market ETF dividend yield as the orange line, 
and the investment grade corporate bond ETF dividend yield as the red line. So you can see right now we have that stock bond inversion that I talked about. The S&P 500 dividend yield is higher than the treasury dividend yield. Remember that stocks generally grow their dividends. So why in the world would anyone accept a treasury bond yield of 1.6 when they can get a better dividend yield with the S&P 500 of 1.81% and those dividends are even likely to grow compared to the treasury bond yield which is unlikely to grow. In fact, it does not grow. In March 9, 2009, we had a similar situation. Although the rates are different, we also had a stock bond inversion. At that time, the S&P 500 dividend yield was about 4% and the treasury yield was about 3.82%. So the S&P 500 dividend yield again was higher. And in hindsight, we know that was a great buying opportunity because the S&P 500 just increased dramatically since then. Of course, the S&P 500 is not at 4% now like it was on March 9, 2009. But it's still higher than the Treasury yield. So, we can still say that the S&P 500 is decently valued compared to the overall market, especially in comparison to the Treasury yield. Of course, this can turn. A few things could happen. The Fed could start raising uh, bond yields, Treasury yields. In my view, that's unlikely to happen because the Fed is determined to pump enough money into the system to ensure that there's plenty of liquidity and especially as we weather the economic storm caused by the Rona virus. The other thing that could happen is that dividends could fall. In fact, many companies have cut their dividends. Uh, and some companies have even suspended their dividends. Companies like Boeing have completely suspended their dividend. When companies suspend their dividends or cut their dividends, the dividends falls and this dividend yield percentage will fall as well. But the S&P 500 is not just one company, it's made up of 500 companies. And many of those companies are doing well. In fact, a lot of tech companies in the S&P 500 are still doing well. The irony is that many of these tech companies don't even give out dividends except for perhaps Apple. So those dividends of companies like Amazon, Google and Facebook that now constitute quite a big percentage of the S&P 500 are not even reflected in this percentage yet. So while some companies like Boeing will see negative earnings and reduced dividends, other companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook will see increased cash flow and increased earnings. So that might likely balance out over the long and medium term. And there's also another way of looking at this. You could also look at the price to earnings yield or the earnings yield that will likely be even higher than the 1.81 percent you see here when you look at the earnings yields of companies like apple microsoft and alphabet this is what you see apple has an earnings yield about 3.85 percent microsoft has an earnings yield of about 3.21% and Alphabet has an earnings yield about 3.44%. Again, you can compare these yields against the dividend yield. You can see that they are much higher than the treasury yield. 
or even the S&P 500 yield. When you're buying a company, you're basically getting all those earnings and not just the dividends. So, I would rather buy an Alphabet and get 3.44% yield than buy the 7-10 to 10 year treasury yield and get 1.60%. It's still a no-brainer to buy good quality stocks. So in my view, the market and especially some of the high quality stocks we own in Project 1 million are not overvalued. If you'd like to be a patron and a supporter of the channel, jump over to our Patreon website and you can subscribe to one of our membership levels. You can also gain personal access through me and also my immediate thoughts and actions in the stock market through this course at about $5 per month. We look forward to seeing you on the Discord chat. So if you like what you saw in this video, uh, please uh, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not so for future updates. And if you like the, the general platform, the eToro platform, and you like the ability to copy good investors, I suggest you join the eToro platform. You can use my link in the description tab and you can even get an extra $50 to start uh, trading. So, thank you for watching. I hope you took away some good uh, points from this video. I hope you stay with us on this journey, this long-term journey, and we'll see you in the next video.